What's up guys, I'm Mike, and today I'm going to be showing you what the different controls and inputs and outputs on the Wim Mini are. So on the top, you have your three capacitative buttons. You have a volume minus, volume plus, and a play pause button over here. And there's also a way that you can use these buttons to pair your different presets and to set up your remote. The capacitative buttons are just a good hands-on way to adjust volume while you're in the room that the Wim Mini is in, but you can always do all of these off of your phone when you're using the Wim Home app. On the back of the Wim Mini, we have our inputs, our outputs, and our power cable. So over here, we have an aux in. This is a 3.5 millimeter port. This is to pull signal into the Wim Mini if you want to use an aux input as the source. This is good if you want to use a computer that has a headphone port, turntables, hi-fi systems, DVD players, Blu-ray players, gaming consoles, etc. The aux output right next to that is also a 3.5 millimeter port, and this is going to pull audio signal out of the Wim Mini into your speakers, home theater system, or soundbar. And again, we can use either combination of the aux and RCA cables or the aux to aux cable to accomplish all of these. Right next to that, we have our USB-C port, which is actually what pulls power into the Wim Mini to power it, so you always need to connect it to power. It's not battery powered. And over here, we have our SPDIF out or optical out, and this is another good way that we can incorporate the Wim Mini with home theater systems and sound bars because we can use our optical cable coming out of this into your sound bar or home theater system, and then you would change on the Wim Home app the output from audio output to optical output, and you'll be able to use this to control that on your Wi-Fi network. So now that you have a basic overview of the controls and the inputs and outputs, let's go to setting it up. So the first thing we're going to do to set it up is actually power it on. So we're going to take this cable, USB-C and USB-A, plug the USB-C end right here. Then we're going to take this end, plug it into our charging block, and plug this into the wall. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're setting up the Wim Mini on your network is download the Wim Home app off of your App Store or your Google Play Store. I've already gone ahead and done that, but if you want to pause the video and then catch up after you've downloaded the app, feel free to do that. Once you've downloaded the Wim Home app, you're going to be greeted with this screen. You're going to have to press next. So when you go into your app, your Wim Mini will actually get recognized by your phone and you'll get this prompt screen, which will say, do you want to set up the Wim Mini on your device? You're going to click set up. So when you get to this screen, you're going to want to make sure that it's the correct Wi-Fi network. So in my case, it is. And then you're going to want to enter in your network password. Once you've typed out your password, you're going to press next. Now it's going to try to establish the Wi-Fi connection between the Wim Mini and your home or business network. And an important thing to note is you always want to make sure that your iPhone or your smartphone has your Bluetooth enabled so we can make the initial connection between the Wim Mini and the phone says success, which means this Wim Mini is now connected to our network. And at this point, if you've purchased an additional Wim voice remote, you can add it now, which I actually do, so let me grab it. Now the Wim voice remote actually takes two AAA batteries that are not included, so make sure you have those available before you start the setup. And as you can see on the screen, it actually prompts you what to do to set it up. If you don't have a Wim voice remote, you can skip the step by pressing no, but since I do have one, I'm gonna press yes. So this screen is basically showing that in order to pair the Wim remote to our Wim Mini, we have to press the source and the mute button at the same time for about two seconds. So I'm gonna do that now. And you can see after doing that, it prompts this screen where we're gonna press pair your remote. And right now it's syncing the remote to the Wim Mini. Connection successful, so we can go to the next step. Depending on the firmware and the software of your home app, it might have to download some new information for your Wim Mini, so this step, just let it go. During this step, just make sure you do not unplug your Wim Mini. Once that's complete, just click done. And now it's giving you the option to rename your Wim Mini. We always recommend that you name it for the room that it's in. So if you ever have a multi-audio setup, you know exactly which Wim Mini you're adjusting. So it also gives you a recommended list that you can choose from, including bathroom, bedroom, etc. So for this one, I'll say this is the dining room. I'm gonna set it to dining room, and then I'm going to click next. But you could set it to whatever room you're actually placing it in. Next, it's going to show you a screen for calibrating the auto latency, which we recommend doing so there's no lags or pauses between making adjustments on your phone 
and registering on the Wim Mini. And once you start the calibration, it's actually going to prompt you to hook it up to your speakers. So I'm going to do that now. So for my speakers today, I'm using the HD5s, which Rockville make really great sounding speakers. And we're going to connect this to the Wim Mini using our aux cable since the speakers have an aux input. So we're going to actually take our included 3.5 millimeter aux cable. I'm gonna plug this end into the aux one on the HD5s. And I'm going to take the other end and plug it into the aux output on the Wim Mini. I'm gonna turn on my speakers. On my speaker, I'm going to make sure to set it to that aux one input, which in this case, you can tell when it's on the green LED. And now that I have my speakers hooked up to my Wim Mini, I can press let's start. And you can see just off that, it calibrated the auto latency. So now we're all hooked up to our speakers. This screen is just letting us know that we have the option to play back at 24 bits, which is a high quality bit rate. This only is outputted when you have your speakers hooked up to the Wim Mini through optical. So for now, we're gonna skip it. The Wim Mini also works with third-party apps like Alexa and iPhone's home app. So if you wanna integrate this into your Alexa ecosystem, you can do that right here just by clicking enable and then signing into your Alexa account. Or if you wanna add it to your home apps so you can control all of your Apple ecosystems, you can do that here as well. But I'm going to just click done for now. So now the cool thing is we're in the Wim home app and this is basically our command center for what we wanna do with our Wim Mini and our speakers. So the cool thing is you can press browse and it'll pull up all the different ways that you can play back music through the Wim Mini home app. So we have Amazon Music, BBC Radio, Calm Radio, Deezer, Napster, Open Market Stream, Pandora, Quobuzz, Radio Paradise, SoundCloud, Sound Archive, Spotify Tidal, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, VTuner. So I use Spotify, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Spotify. It's gonna ask you if you wanna open the Spotify app. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna bring up your Spotify. You can go to a song that you wanna play. So I'm gonna to go to this artist. I'm just gonna find a random song to play from this artist. So you're actually going to click this button in the corner and you're going to set it to what you wanna to play to. Remember, we named this Wim Mini Dining Room. So I'm gonna click Dining Room. So now if I play music, you're gonna hear it through these speakers. And the cool thing about this is it's connected to the Wim Mini, which is a completely Wi-Fi enabled network establishment, which means anywhere I go in my house with my phone, I can play as long as I'm connected through Wi-Fi, it's gonna come out of these speakers. So you're not limited by the range of Bluetooth. The cool thing about this is we can make adjustments here. And it's going to increase on your speaker, even if you're in a lower you hear the volume get lower and you can always go back to your Wim home app and make fine-tune adjustments from here it's kind of your command center so again I can raise the volume you hear it get louder I can lower the volume I can turn off the volume everything from just the app on my phone the other cool thing is like, say you left your phone in your bedroom, you're down in the dining room and you wanna play music that you had on your phone, you can actually press the play button on your Wim Mini and it'll start playing the last thing that you had on your phone. Raise volumes on the Wim Mini, lower volume, all from the capacitative buttons. So that's really cool because it gives you the in-room control and then if you're walking around your house, you have the in-hand control from your phone. The other cool thing is since we connected our remote to our unit, we can actually use the remote to control the different things and it's going to control what's going on on the phone as well. So if I press play, you'll see the music starts. I can pause it by pressing that button again. I can raise volume up and down. You see it's doing it on the app as well. I can skip to the next song. I can go back to the previous song, all from the remote. And we have our source button, so if we click on our source button, it'll try to see if there's anything hooked up through optical or Bluetooth, aux in. You'll also notice that there's these four preset buttons, and presets are really cool in the Wim Home app. You can actually set a bunch of different things as presets. So you can actually set podcast, playlist, 
and other content that you like to stream very quickly as a preset and then access it from the remote. So I could set a playlist that I listen to a lot as preset one and then access it from the remote. Let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna go into Spotify and I'm just gonna go to a playlist that I have made. So I'll go songs like this. So now that I have that playlist queued up, I can go over here to the settings. I can press these three dots over here and you'll see that I have the option to set it to preset one. So I'm going to say preset one. It says, okay, let's say I'm on Spotify. I'm just searching random stuff and I just listen to other music. But then as soon as I press preset one, it's going to pull up that playlist and start playing. Music. This is really cool because it just gives you a lot of flexibility as what you can set onto those four different presets. You can set podcasts that you like to listen to, a playlist, a party playlist that you like to listen to or have quick access to. And that's basically what you can do with these four preset buttons. So you can mix and match them with whatever content you like listening to. Now on top of your aux input connecting through Wi-Fi, you can also connect a device to the Wim Mini using Bluetooth. To do that, you're actually going to go into Bluetooth pairing mode by holding the plus and the minus for more than two seconds. You'll see this green LED on the Wim Mini start to flash, and now it's searching for Bluetooth. So you can actually go onto a separate device. I have an iPad here, and you're gonna see that dining room comes up because that's what we named this Wim Mini. I'm going to press on it to connect. And now I'm connected through Bluetooth. You heard that sound come through the speakers. We have a full Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection. So now I can go play content. You hear everything working? This is a Bluetooth connection. And then you can actually go onto your phone and you can see we have the different options to lower the volume, raise the volume. So this is really cool because this enables you to have Bluetooth connected to your Wim Mini, but still control it off your main device through the Wim Home app. So hopefully this video explained to you the different controls, functions, inputs, and outputs on your Wim Mini, but feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or concerns. We'll see you in the next one.